Ladies, gentlemen, and arisen of all ages, one of my favorite parts about Dragon's Dogma 2 is the combat itself, but not just the general mechanics or the concepts of it, but more specifically, what I really find exceptionally satisfying is just how well put together every vocation feels. The thing is, in order to experience just how special each one can be, you do need to put the time into them. You need to rank them up, because at rank 1, no vocation is going to feel complete in any way, because it simply isn't yet. The way that you rank up your vocations in this game is by, well, playing them, really, but there are of course a number of specific things that you can do or places that you can go to increase the effectiveness of gaining DCP, which is discipline, and this is what defines your vocation rank ups. So now that people are a good portion of the way through the game on average, let's talk proper later game DCP farm as a concept in general to let you experience more of what the game has to offer before you finish up the story, at least when it comes to vocations. First things first then, at this stage in the game, you should be fully capable of unlocking the final vocation, which is the Warfarer. We do have a video about how to unlock these in a bit more depth, but the simple version is that you can go through Drabnir Grotto down here to reach the Agaman Volcanic Island. Then you can go to the Volcanic Island Camp over here, just a short trek east, and in this camp will be the Hot Springs, and in the Hot Springs right beside the building is this gentleman who you can deliver Newt Liquor to. If you deliver three bottles of Newt Liquor to him, then he will tell you his secrets and give you the Warfare Vocation, and then if you talk to him again after that, he will give you the Legendary Skill, which allows you to switch weapons with that vocation. The reason that this is important then is because Warfare is many things things, but arguably is at least the most satisfying overall vocation rank farmer because it works in a really interesting way. When you are playing Warfare, your discipline gain that you get from killing enemies is actually split between your various vocations. For this test, I checked my vocation XP numbers for various vocations, then I went out to kill a few baddies in Batal, I recorded the amount of discipline that I earned from killing them, then went and rechecked my vocation XP status. Overall, I gained 266 DCP as a whole. My Warfare vocation at Itself, gained 139 of that DCP, so just slightly more than half of that. The other half of it was actually split pretty much evenly between every other vocation that I have unlocked that isn't maxed out at least, which is very specific but useful information. What I mean is out of the 266 DCP, Warfare gained 139, so there's 127 left to spread out. This is probably due to some sort of rounding, but every other vocation I have except for Warrior gained 16 DCP, which is just under 1 eighth of 127. Eight vocations gain discipline because warrior is maxed out and warfare was the one that already gained the main chunk so that makes sense logically and for the sake of answering the question before it comes up no i did not have every vocation's weapon equipped either so it doesn't require you to do that i also did test earlier just to see and you definitely don't gain any vocation rank discipline for vocations that have not been acquired to begin with so you do have to unlock them if you want to start gaining ranks with them overall the findings of the testing then are that warfare doesn't just equally level everything at max speed so it isn't peak vocation rank farming in itself. It doesn't create discipline out of thin air. It just splits the same amount of discipline you would otherwise get. However, what it does mean is that you can sort of snapshot upgrade multiple ones if you want to by only unlocking the vocations that you want ranked up, then playing Warfare to do them at the same time. This could be especially useful for people who really want, let's say, the rank 9 Trickster Augment, but really have no interest at all in playing Trickster itself. Well, what if you could just unlock Trickster and then play a bunch of Warfare with various other vocation skills, and while it would take longer than just playing trickster to get there, it would let you reach your goal without having to change your gameplay style up too much if you didn't want to. It's just a totally viable option that some players will use and some players won't. Also worth noting that theoretically, once all unlocked vocations are ranked 9, Warfarer itself would get the full vocation rank from the discipline that you gain. Alternatively, if Warfarer gets max rank first, then theoretically 100% of the discipline gain would be split between the unlocked vocations instead of only half of it. Past that then, we have one more thing to mention really, I don't even have this thing my Myself yet as secret tokens have just not at all been my main priority, but for those of you who have been scouring the map for these and collecting every one that you find to build up your collection, the latest possible reward for these for 220 tokens handed in at the Vocation Guild is the Ring of Endeavor. This gives you a slight boost to the discipline gained from defeating foes. Discipline, of course, directly translates to Vocation Rank Speed, so if you are fortunate enough to have acquired this many tokens, then of course this ring is ideal for this activity. I have to point that out, I have to mention it, because because it just, it literally says the words on it that it does. All that out of the way then, let's talk about the actual best later game farm method and location for discipline. And it involves the place where I mentioned unlocking Warfarer, which is the Volcano Island Camp. This island has the highest density of later game low tier enemies in a long followable path before the actual end game. The way that this game works, larger enemies give you lots of experience, so levels, but not a whole lot of DCP or discipline. Smaller enemies give relatively far less experience, but far more discipline relative to 
the amount of time spent killing them. So to level your vocation ranks as quickly as possible, you want to kill as many small enemies as you can. The trick here is quite simply to follow this path here from the Volcano Island camp out to the campfire right here beside Drabnir Grotto. You want to make sure that you do it at night for bonus monster spawns. It is worth mentioning this path doesn't seem to get a massive boost to the amount of monsters at night compared to day, but it does get like a gorm and a couple of other things, so even if it's minimal, it is still more enemies than day, so it is worth it. I think it's just densely packed enough as a base that there's just not enough room for extra stuff. Then you simply want to go back and forth between these two locations, resting in between for four days in a row to spawn the enemies again and make it a fresh night, either by campfire resting four times in a row in the one spot, or using the doze off option on the bench in Volcanic Island Camp 16 times, as that is the equivalent of four days of time passage. As well, when you rest at the campfire the last time, you want to make sure that you cook a meal for the stat buffs that it gives you, as they will increase your kill speed and thus relatively your farm speed too. Honestly, it's pretty much that simple in the end. I prefer this route right here that goes right along the coast. The path there lets you go through just a ton of enemies. There is a section with some ladders and scaffolding that is guaranteed to have like 10, 15, 20 late game goblinkin. I've had a section multiple times where I've had a minotaur pop up and fought it and then even had it run into the ocean and die a miraculous death only to have a great griffin descend from the sky literally moments later. This area has enemies, so you do need to be prepared for fights. As well, it's worth mentioning that the campfire at the other end has a weirdly high raid rate as well, which does give us extra DCP when it happens, but means that you should probably bring at least one camping kit on each of your pawns just to be safe and ensure that you actually get through four nights rest per trip without running out of kits. That said, I've had inconsistent frequency with this, really. Sometimes I go there with eight camping kits and get raided every other night that I try to rest and don't make it through the cycle, but Josh has also stayed at the same spot seven days in a row without a singular incident. So rather than suggesting that you purposefully try to farm it because it does seem a bit unreliable, I'll just say that you should bring extra camping kits, and if this raid does happen, it's not a bad thing, it's a really good thing if it happens in the four nights rest that you do per run, because it's a good chunk of bonus DCP nearly for free, as this right here is a raid of rock saurians who are worth about 75 DCP each per kill. And while these enemies are normally a bit of a tough one to actually get through, we are situated on a cliff with this campsite. So all you need to do, regardless of your vocation, is get a hit in on their tail, or even just wait for your pawns to do that for you, then grab the saurians while they are flinching. Throw them off the cliff, you get 75 DCP. Because we don't care about the materials right now, we're just farming DCP, doesn't matter if you throw them off, so do it. Do this for all of them, and you'll get quite a bit more discipline too. If you want to really farm DCP quickly at this stage of the game, this is absolutely the best place and way to do so. It's worth noting as well that there are multiple items in the game, such as the Medusin spell bow, which say that they increase the experience gained when killing enemies. That's a true statement, the way that it words it, but do not mistake it to also include the discipline that you get. It does not increase discipline gain, so if that is your sole goal, then you don't need to worry about those types of items for this purpose. Past that, my only real recommendation then is to get yourself a mage pawn with high celerity as a spell. This gives you an increased movement speed buff, and it is one of the spells that can be force cast by using the help pawn command, though usually they will heal you first if you do need healing. This just increases your movement speed while traveling for a short duration after you get hit by the buff, you'll be glowing red when you have it, again just increasing the speed of the farm itself by increasing your own speed. And that just about does it then everyone, the best practices and the actual ideal route and place to farm for discipline and vocation ranks as a result in the later section of the game, leading to the easiest ways to get to experience the larger playstyle of each given vocation, rather than just being stuck with the basic stuff. Of course there's also stuff like legendary skills for each vocation that are also quite important, and we do have a video on the channel with all the vocations meisters if you want to find these as well. But this has just been about maximizing the pure discipline gain in itself. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and hopefully it helps you out in your continued journey through Dragon's Dogma 2. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye